Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So a few weeks ago, Steve from Hardware Unbox found that GeForce drivers were limiting performance on lower end CPUs by up to 20 to 30%. This is a lot of performance that we're giving up because of Nvidia's use of a software scheduler. AMD graphics cards use hardware schedulers built onto the GPU. Now with DirectX 12 and Vulkan titles, the advantage Nvidia saw using the software scheduler in DirectX 11 is basically gone. Now the paradigm is shifting and AMD graphics cards seem to be better on more entry level CPUs. So I wanted to explore that for myself and see what sort of performance difference we'd see using more mainstream graphics cards, not like RTX 3080s at 1080p, but I'm going to be using the RTX 2060 that I have and the RX 580. These are two different tiers of graphics cards, RX 580 being around the 1060 level and the GTX or the RTX 2060 being about a 1080 Ti. But with that performance difference, I wanted to see how much closer the RX 580 would be under CPU constrained conditions. So that's what we're gonna be checking out here today in this video, but first. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers all kinds of different areas of expertise, such as animation, design, illustration, lifestyle, photo and film, business, writing, financing, Pretty much anything that you'd like to learn and gain new skills on, they have classes for you. For example, I've checked out The Art of the Start, turning ideas into a high growth business. This is an original on the platform by Guy Kawasaki. As you can see, there are many different classes and what's really great is this is an ad free platform. But in this case, premium does not mean expensive. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. On top of that, right now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. With 2021 being such an unknown and everybody having a little bit of extra free time, might as well brush up that resume by checking out Skillshare. Links are in the video description down below. Now back to the video. All right, so before we get into testing, I'm just gonna go over the test bench used. I'm using the Core i3-10100. This is a CPU that Steve also used in his benchmark. Nowadays, this is an entry-level CPU, but it's relatively comparable to something like an i7-6700 or 7700 or older i5s with four cores and eight threads. Now, what I did is instead of just using four core eight thread, I also disabled hyper-threading because hyper-threading, at least on GeForce cards, typically will give about a 20 to 25% performance boost. I wanted to see if this would affect AMD's graphics cards at all, since Steve was seeing that 20 to 30% performance boost. And to be honest with you, I wanted to see if four core four thread is still viable here today, at least with AMD graphics cards. And let's just say the results are pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and check those out. All right, so kicking off the benchmarks with Cyberpunk 2077, this is with 1080p high settings, as all games are 1080p high preset. All right, so kicking things off with the RX 580, we can see here with the four core eight thread, we have 38 on the average FPS. That does drop down to 35 when going down to four core four thread, 28 down to 27 on the 1% low. So there is a little bit of a difference here on the RX 580. Now, interestingly enough, on the RTX 2060 with four core eight thread, we have 57. That actually goes up to 58 with four core four thread. And then on the 1% low, we go from 42 down to 39. So we have a little bit of a reversal there. Overall, my takeaway from these benchmarks is that 1080p high settings for either of these graphics cards were basically still GPU limited no matter what. So this right here, it's just too demanding for either of these graphics cards for 1080p high. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and this is more like what we're gonna see moving forward. All right, so with the RX 580, we have 52 and 52 on the average FPS, so identical, and then 39 down to 38, so margin of error on that one, on four core, four threads. So the RX 580, 
essentially is the same regardless if you have a four core eight thread CPU or a four core four thread CPU. Now moving on over to the RTX 2060 with four core eight thread, we have a nice solid 60 on the average that drops down to 52 with four cores and four threads. On the 1% lows, we're showing 45 with 4-core 8-thread. That goes down to 36 with 4-core and 4-thread. So that's a substantial drop right there. So with no change on the RX 580, there's a substantial decrease in performance on the RTX 2060. Next game tested, this is Watchdog Legions, and kind of the same thing that we just saw, 61 FPS on the RX 580 with 4-core 8-thread. That goes down to 60 FPS with 4-core and 4-threads. So basically the same margin of error there. And the 1% low is identical at 47 FPS. Switching over to the RTX 2060, we have 74 FPS on average with 4-core 8-thread. That goes down to 66 with four core four thread and then on the one percent low 55 fps down to 42 fps with four cores and four threads so that's a huge decrease right there as the arcs 580 is actually pulling ahead with either four core four thread or four core eight thread over the rtx 2060 on one percent lows so we're definitely seeing a trend here now moving on over to doom eternal this is an easier game to run once again 1080p high we can see the RX 580 is basically the same. Once again, margin of error here. There's 1% difference where the 4-core four 4-thread four actually performs slightly better than the 4-core 8-thread. And once again, that's just margin of error. So that's basically identical. Now, this is a little bit different than we saw on the two Ubisoft games. We have the RTX 2060 coming in at 180 FPS. That only goes down to 179 on 4-core four 4-thread. Four once again, margin of error. So they're identical. Now, we do see a difference here on the 1% low going from 99 FPS all the way down to 88 FPS. This is a pretty substantial drop and actually brings it almost in line with where the RX 580 is on that 1% low. Okay, so this is where things get interesting when we average the numbers up across all the games tested. So the four game average for the RX 580, we have 67 FPS with four core eight thread and 67 FPS with four core four thread. So it's identical. Go figure. And then on the 1% low, just margin of error here with one FPS between them. So essentially an RX 580, whether you have a four core eight thread or higher core count CPU versus a four core four thread CPU is gonna deliver no discernible difference in performance. Assuming you play your games at 1080p high-ish settings. So that's good news for anybody out there still rocking an older i5 or a more modern i3 with only four cores and four threads. Now moving over to the RTX 2060, things get a little bit more interesting. So looking at average FPS on four core eight thread, we come up with 93 overall. That drops down to 89 with four cores, and four threads. That is a loss of 4.5%. So not a huge difference there, and it's a far cry from that 20 to 30% that Steve was seeing in his tests which mu with much higher end GPUs. However, taking a look at the 1% low, going from 60 FPS down to 51, that is a decrease of 17.6%, and that is a pretty big hit there. Also pretty interesting, if you take a look with 4-core four 4-thread, four the RTX 2060 is almost the same as the RX 580 when it comes to 1% lows. So even though the average FPS is substantially higher, the 1% low performance is almost on par. So this is a clear indication that 4-core four 4-thread four is definitely causing problems for the GeForce cards relative to their AMD counterparts. Likely something like an RX 5600 XT, which is closer to the RTX 2060 in performance, will be substantially faster, and hopefully in the future, we will be able to test that. All right, so it seemed like my theory was correct. The AMD graphics card, four core eight thread or four core four thread, at least on DirectX 12 or Vulkan titles, literally makes no difference. That's actually really good news for anybody out there using an old core i5, you know, quad core, you know, four core, four thread CPU, or more modern CPUs would be like i3s, I think the eighth and ninth gen, those were four core, four thread. Uh, nowadays, you can get four core, eight thread at the i3 level, but uh, perhaps the Pentiums, I actually haven't looked into it, but perhaps Pentium CPUs are four core, four thread. So if you have a mainstream AMD graphics card, that should be just fine. Now, I don't have a faster AMD graphics card on hand to test where kind of that limit is, 
But it would be interesting to see something like a 5600 XT. That might still be just fine. It's hard to say, as the CPU was not completely taxed using the RX 580. So there's definitely a, a good bit more headroom there. Now, the RDX 2060, that's a different story. And this definitely shows that, yes, the GeForce drivers do require much more CPU grunt to be able to, well, do the same thing that the AMD cards do. And that led to a minus 4.5% average and a minus 17.5% on the 1% low. And I'm going to say this for like the millionth time. The 1% low number is the only one that matters. You can have an average of 800 frames per second. That's irrelevant. Does not matter if your 1% low is like 50 FPS. That's just my opinion. You can do whatever you want. But in my eyes, that jarring drop to those really low 1% lows, that's what kind of breaks the immersion for me personally. So with the four core, four thread limited CPU, the RTX 2060 in my eyes is virtually no faster than the RX 580. So that means that extra like 30 or 40% faster that it should be is just completely wasted. Now going to four core eight thread, that does open up a pretty good extra bit of headroom for the RTX 2060 to flourish. And it looks like most modern games seem to run fine on four core eight threads still on GeForce GPUs. However, circling back to the AMD graphics cards, which in my eyes are the star of the show here, four core four thread CPUs still viable. This really puts the nail in that hole. You need mega CPUs for gaming. You really, really don't. GeForce graphics cards do need higher end CPUs just to work at their max capacity. That means you have to spend more money on your system to make GeForce work right. That's an extra benefit to AMD. To me, this is like AMD's secret feature. This is a feature that they should be touting because nowadays this makes sense. Back in the day with DirectX 11, NVIDIA software scheduler would allow a quad core CPU, for example, to use three or four threads on a game that was basically single threaded, which removed a lot of CPU overhead and gave them better performance. Nowadays, we don't need that anymore. And let's be honest, most modern CPUs have enough single core grunt to basically run any older games anyway. AMD doesn't really need to worry about this. So yeah, I think that this is a great thing for anybody out there using an older system or looking to maximize their performance per dollar. If you're looking at buying like an old office PC and throw a GPU in there, looks like GeForce is not a good option for you. You're gonna be much better off with AMD. Now this kind of leads to kind of an interesting conundrum, DLSS or this feature. If you're trying to build like the most budget friendly PC possible, granted today's not the day to do it with GPUs being crazy, but in the future, when things normalize, if you're just trying to get maximum performance per dollar, which would be the better way to go as DLSS will give you a huge performance uplift. As of right now, Nvidia doesn't have anything that I would say would be an entry level RTX graphics card. Um, they would basically need a sub $200 RTX card for me to really think that they'd be, that's a real option for you. So in my eyes, if you're looking to get the most life out of your system, not overspend on CPUs unnecessarily, AMD is definitely going to be the way to go. If you're going to be running your games at realistic resolutions, at realistic settings. For example, if you have like an RX 5700 XT, you should be gaming at 1440p. I'm just being honest with you. That's what that card's designed for. And like the 6800 XT, that's a 4K card. So if you game at the resolution the cards are really designed for, you're going to get the max value with the cheapest possible CPU from AMD. So I found this really interesting. Steve was definitely onto something. We saw less of an effect on the mainstream graphics cards like the 2060, but the effect is still there. And I'm almost curious to see how high we can go on the AMD scale. I might ask Celso, who has a lot of the 6000 series GPUs, to check this out on one of his systems and see if we can figure out exactly where that four core, four thread limit is. Because let's say a 5700 XT works fine with four core, four thread CPUs. That means if you have a six core, 12 thread CPU, you're probably good all the way up to like a 6800 XT, no problem. And this just means you just don't have to spend as much on your system. You don't have to buy a big water cooler. You don't have to buy a big case with big fans. You can just buy a cheap 65 watt CPU, throw on a cheap cooler or use the stock cooler. And guess what? That's gonna give you all the performance you get out of your GPU. That's an interesting little paradigm shift 
away from needing massive amounts of CPU horsepower to get the most out of your graphics card. So I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below about this. Uh, I really want to hear if you guys have tested this yourself, if you've noticed any weird quirks using maybe really low core count CPUs like an older i5 using GeForce or AMD. I'm really interested to hear your comments on that. And if you like videos like this, please make sure you smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. I'm going to continue investigating into more interesting aspects of PC gaming, figuring out ways that you can spend less money on PC parts as much as possible in the current environment, but find the absolute cheapest way to game and get the absolute maximum performance out of it. So if you like that kind of stuff, once again, like, share, subscribe. I appreciate all of your support and your direct support over on Patreon. If you want to join, links in the description below. But that's really all I have for you guys here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.